Hey guys, good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Costa Rica Real Estate and Investments. I'm your host, Richard Beckson. Uh, sorry, I haven't been putting out tons of content recently, guys. I've actually been doing quite a bit of traveling. Uh, last week I was in Nosada, then Playa Junquial, uh, Playa Negra, Avianas, and then in Hacienda Panilla, looking at a project uh, that a client or an investor is potentially looking to do there. So taking a look at that. Uh, and then also in Conchao, um, basically just doing some of my uh, the travel agency work uh, up there, working with the, uh, with the W and also the West in there. Today, we're going to be talking to Daniel Loria. This is going to be very interesting. I've known Daniel for quite a time. He actually lives up um, by Junquial. Uh, Daniel is the owner of Avicenia. I hope I've said that right. Avicenia. Uh, it's a company that focuses on environmental impact studies and project management of basically building homes and also hotels here in Costa Rica. He's been doing this for over 16 years, and he's an expert in basically project management when it comes to building, as well as environmental impact studies, uh, which are typically required here in Costa Rica to build when the house is over a certain size. So it's going to be really interesting. Remember, if you have any questions that you want to ask Daniel, all of his contact details are below. Remember, guys, I love to hear comments. Uh, would really appreciate reviews as well. If you guys are listening to this on Spotify or Apple or podcasts, uh, give us a five, please. Um, remember to add comments, remember to subscribe, uh, and you'll just basically be let, well, we'll let you know as soon as new episodes come out. We're trying to get two out a week here. Uh, this is actually episode 41. I'm trying to figure out who I'm going to get for episode 50. Uh, if you have any suggestions, let me know, comment away. Remember, you can also contact me um, if you'd like to be on the podcast as well or have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover. My email address is info at investingcostarica.com. That's info at investingcostarica.com. Let's get straight into it. Good afternoon, Daniel. How are you doing? Hey, Rich. How are you? Very, very good. good. To be here. Yeah, no, I really appreciate you coming on. I know how busy you are, and uh, it's an absolute uh, honor to have you on here, sir. No, thank you. Likewise. Thanks no for having me. Well, I know we've got quite a bit to cover here. We're going to cover, uh, I said in the introduction, we're going to cover some of the environmental studies and also some of the projects that you've been involved in and kind of what you guys do and kind of some of the guidance potentially for listeners here looking to build here in Costa Rica. But I mean, you've been doing this for over 16 years now, and I'm sure during mm -hmm. that time, you've seen some really interesting things. However, with all the change that's come recently, I mean, what's really surprised you? Well, we have been getting a fair amount of developers focused on regenerative projects, right? They're, they're really looking to, to integrate uh, ecosystem restoration as, as one of their main focuses. That's really, uh, it caught us by, by surprise because typically in our experience, um, you know, environmental in the past was really much of a headache, you know, people yep. really... Uh, saw that as just you know another permit on on the list, and now it's really it's really taken a you know a different course, and it's it's really become an integral part of the of the design process. And we're excited to be uh, you know involved in in a couple of projects down uh, in Santa Teresa that have that focus as their primary drive, and it's it's created a different environment for consulting, and we're excited to be to be part of that uh, new movement right now. That's awesome, dude. I mean, I mean, you know, how much do you think of that is just the world kind of changing or how much do you think of that is Costa Rica pushing these environmental kind of studies on people, which then like, you know, is kind of getting Costa Rica a bit of a brand for that type of development? Yeah, it's, it's all it's all part of the uh, it's part of the same movement, I think, with everything that, that we've we've been exposed to. Um, everything that's going on with, uh, you know, climate change. And I've, I've, I've read the first IPCC, um, you know, report since it came out. And I've seen the evolution of, of how Costa Rica has adapted to that relatively slowly, right? And now I think that we're, you know, at the verge of making the right decisions or basically, you know, looking at a very grim future. Uh, things are stepping up a lot. And Costa Rica has a lot of the the good ingredients to be able to make that a reality because we we have the the legislation you know as as much as it is complicated it it, it does have a fair amount of of um of platforms to be able to create sustainable projects and be able to bring them to the world in a way that that uh you can uh certify them you can certify them locally you can certify them internationally so it's it's all part of the mix uh bringing in what's going on climate change you know pandemia uh, all those changes coming through to, to create that that drive for for taking 
the sustainable design approach up a notch from what we had previously, which was really focused on just mitigating carbon footprint. And now we're really focused on, um, you know, integrating, restoring um, ecosystem conservation and how that fits into the uh, whole equation, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, Costa Rica's a paradise, dude. Uh, you know, we've got to, you know, we've got to protect this thing. But I mean, it, it's so nice to see this happening kind of, I mean, it's, it's happening organically, like most things in Costa Rica. Um, you know, and it's been great to see. And it's really, you know, Costa Rica's got a great, you know, brand as a sustainable kind of eco, I suppose, an eco-friendly kind of country. So now let's just talk mm-hmm. about the environmental studies a little bit, you know, because I often hear these kind of kind of thrown around, you know, what is it? When is it required? Like, I mean, when would somebody be interacting or hearing about an environmental study? Um, well, the, the let's say the, the legal framework can can it's it's broad. It encompasses um, anything that's over basically 500 square meters and and on. It depends on where your jurisdiction is. If you have a a scenario, I think we're going to be talking about concession and maritime zone in in a bit. So. Uh, that's where you can get uh, more specific and have tighter uh, requirements. But basically, if, if you're if you're building anything over a a typical uh, home, if you're going you know a bit overboard into the you know I think the higher end spectrum, yep. you're probably looking at a a environmental permit. And um, yeah, Setena, which is is the noun the the name sounds throughout uh, the consulting industry. Uh, as people are, you know, uh, it's an institution you don't want to be uh, dealing with. Nevertheless, there have been um, lots of, um, let's say, lots of betterments. Uh, they've stepped up their game to have a digital platform right now, which has created a lot of benefits for us as consultants and the developers and design teams, et cetera, which can, um, we can prepare information and have it reviewed quicker. Um, I think the 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 pandemic has also brought about some some changes that have forced everybody to be more expedite, and but overall, I think um, that that's that's a good benchmark to 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 take from if you're doing yep. you know let's say an, 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 a bigger house to you know a full on, I mean we've we've been involved in everything from you know basic residential and commercial up to coastal infrastructure marinas. Uh, we worked at the airport for for a long time as well, so. Um, yeah, we, we've we've had that experience of working on all sorts of different projects, but ultimately you have um, three three different instruments to to be able to permit your project. Um, typically, everybody knows about D ones and D twos, and then you have um, two other uh, instruments that are a bit more complicated, require more paperwork and analysis. It really depends on on the project you're developing. What is a D one and what is a D two? Those are the the basic um, forms that you would fill out, and they they run through, um, you know the the they'll they'll guide you through the different um, requirements in terms of all your your legal framework, uh, your registry, your your survey. Then you'll you'll address um, uh, consumption, uh, wastewater, potable water, energy. Um, if you have, you know, if you have a project that's involved in, 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 uh, waste material that, that might have some specific legislation, they'll guide you through. It's, it's basically a form with, uh, these different guidelines. It'll, it'll spit out a number that number equates to, um, you know, the degree of impact, and then you'll have to address those uh, potential environmental impacts with, with, uh, more specific studies. But I mean, if you're building a private home here that's under 500 square meters, you're not going to need an environmental study. No, if you're outside the maritime zone, okay, you won't. Yep. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll, we'll complicate it in a minute. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, you, you mentioned some of the projects, and it sounds like you've been, in, again, involved in everything from kind of, you know, smaller homes all the way up to commercial and also the airport here. But I mean, mm-hmm. what are you currently involved in? And also, you know, what have been your favorite projects and why? We've had the opportunity to work with, um, you know, from from let's say the the developer who's just doing a couple of homes up to um, working with Minaya, right? The the Ministry of of Environment. Uh, we've collaborated. One of our more exciting projects is in Isla del Coco that we've been, uh, you know, honored to be able to work with uh, researchers and scientists from from CIMAD and the University of Costa Rica and and Minaya working on. 
the let's say the the, the master plan that they have uh, they've been working on that for years now but uh, we've we've gone through providing consulting for specific uh, components of of uh, of that uh, you know broad master plan um, that's been one of the most exciting projects for obvious reasons and I'm an avid uh, diver myself so I've it, I've had the opportunity to be out there at least uh, four times now wow. and it's it's been one of the most uh, amazing experiences in my life for sure. But uh, the airport brought about um, uh, lots of interaction with more than 20 different institutions in, in the country. And there was a lot of responsibility. I don't know if, if recently you saw that uh, there was some uh, wildlife uh, collisions with uh, smaller aircraft. No, I and, didn't. And um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's part of um, you know, the, the issues that might come about on a weekly basis, but uh, um, it would, that's one example of like a minor issue that could blow up in your face and really, uh, you know, create a, a huger issue up to, you know, more, more complicated, uh, issues with municipalities, but it was a great experience to be involved in, in, you know, in, in such interaction with different institutions It brought about a lot of context and, and a lot of experience for sure. So, I mean, it sounds like you guys, you guys do a lot of project management as well as kind of environmental studies. Am I correct in saying that? Yes, sure. Yeah, uh, in in Nosada and Santa Teresa, we're currently involved in in higher end uh, construction, um, you know, larger homes and uh, hospitality. Um, we're engaged also in in horizontal condominiums and built condominiums, which we're we're project managing those as well. Um, it, it's a mix of pre construction phase and construction phase. We're yep. we're basically uh, involved in in both of those at this point. And our our background in environmental has given us a, a good uh, a good foothold in and be able being able to compensate and integrate uh, a lot of that pre construction consulting and and bring it into like a turnkey package that has worked for us very well. Well, I mean that's great to hear that. I mean you're able to use that environmental kind of influence to I suppose to an extent guide developers and builders here in Costa Rica to really kind of have a sense of that sustainability and also that their carbon footprint. But I mean, you've been, it sounds like you've been involved in quite a few projects. I mean, where do you see, I mean, I'm sure not all projects have, you know, always been a straight line. I'm sure they've had to go off a few, you know, off the rails a few times. I mean, where do you see most projects go wrong? And what advice would you give to anyone looking to build or develop a project here in Costa Rica? Sure. Uh, what we've seen typically happen, and I think it's, it's, it's the recipe for disaster is not having a integral due diligence procedure done on on your land when you're about to purchase it we've had the experience of being uh, introduced into a project where the land is already purchased and the developer has an idea in, in his head and the design team is probably might be pushing something that has a series of complications that could have been identified with the proper due diligence that that goes and expands more than just the legal aspects of it and has an integrated approach to site analysis and going in, in depth in, in that uh, sense. So that's where I feel that we've also provided uh, that expertise uh, recently and, and have had really good results in, in guiding developers into different options based off of that more broader approach to, to looking at, at uh, the development process. But it really needs to happen when you're, when you're looking at property Yep, and that'll save you a lot of time if you just you know get pressured into purchasing because of what the market is doing right now. You you need to take your time. I think that's great advice, and the reason I say that, Daniel, is this: is because I was with some clients the other day that were looking to buy a property in Naranjo, um, in mm -hmm. a in a it's it's an actually in a in a condominium, beautiful piece of land, five thousand square meters. It's it's got a great view. Uh, and they wanted to put the deposit on it. And I said, well, look, you need to do your due diligence first, not from the legal aspect, but you need to figure out is the Usa Suelo, what you, you know, the zoning, and also is that you can build what it is that you want to build on it. So, I mean, after doing the due diligence, you know, the municipality were like, yeah, you can build on it. But then it was like, well, can you build what it, you really want to build on it, which is they want to build a home and a garage, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. you know, after speaking with the developer uh, and also the lawyers, it was like, okay, Mr. Developer, submit you know, some very rough plans for construction here just to see if we can get the permits before actually putting the money down because I'd hate for the clients to actually, you know, purchase the property, then go through the process and then the municipality can be like, no, you can't build on that. Yeah, yeah, we've, we, we've seen those scenarios and even worse. Um, like I say, especially 
I mean, you're, you're talking about a, uh, an area that already has, that's already urbanized, right? Yep. When, when you go out and you're exploring out, you know, in, in the rural areas and uh, when you get into the coastal maritime zone as well, I mean, the, the variables just, it, it's, it's a huge spectrum of issues that you need to look at. And, and there's, a, there's a lot of hitting, hidden situations that, um, you know, might be the aquifer you have under your, your land or um, how do you address your forestry coverage? Do you really know what's going on? Does it really equate to a forest or do you have something that might be eligible to a certain um, degree of development and, and densities, et cetera? Um, there's just a lot of things you need to look at for sure. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think if you're going to do something big here that's, that's not in like more of a zoned urban area, I think a very deep due diligence dive uh, is 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 very smart, and I, I take it that's something that your company could also do as well, Daniel. Sure, yeah, and, and we we have we have it down to to prioritize what really needs to be looked at, right? We can we can we can start looking at a property desktop and really cut to the chase with what needs to to be compensated on site, and that uh, you know we can we can optimize the timeframes that the client is really under pressure to have to close. And so we can prioritize to make sure that he gets all the information for his counsel as well, legal counsel and design teams so that we can, you know, make quick decisions and still be able to be in the game to, to, you know, to close yep. or to walk away if that's the case. Right. Yeah. I mean, walking away is difficult, but I mean, there are times where you do need to walk away. I mean, I've walked away from land before, you know, sometimes where I've just realized is okay, there's no water. You're not going to get a water letter and there's no water close. So I'm not, I'm walking, yeah. you know, so sure. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's talk uh, title to concession land here a little bit. Um, just because again, I think, uh, you know, the idea of concession land is very new to some people that may be listening to this, maybe not, but I mean, what's the mm -hmm. main difference between them? Alrighty. Uh, well, um, basically you're looking at a, a, a title that was generated based off of very uh, old legislation, which uh, some of it is obviously still uh, used today. For example, um, the Informaciones Posesorias, which uh, refer to uh, generating a property title based on possession, right? That goes back to the 1940s in Costa Rica. Uh, so there's, there's three different scenarios, which I won't get into detail because we'll, we'll be here all night discussing it, but basically, um, they're all based off of uh, that, that uh, title generation process, which is obviously specific to areas that are outside of the maritime zone, but that they have created it rights uh, throughout uh, different acts that there, there are three specific acts. And one of them is very interesting because it, it dates back to, to our, um, our relationship with Spain as a colony, which yeah. are, are the famous crown rights. Not sure if you guys have heard of that before, but that's that's one of them. The, the other two are basically um, acts that have been created uh, for a specific uh, you know uh, time frame um, back in the '70s, where you could uh, register your your adverse possession rights, take it through that you know that process, which has been uh, active in Costa Rica since since uh, the '40s, and register your 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 rights over. A, a specific area that's inside the, the maritime zone. So that creates the title. Then the, the maritime zone itself is split into two distinct areas, right? The, the, uh, the public zone, which everybody knows about, that's, that's basically the beach up to the first uh, 50 meters. And uh, after that, there is a, a, a 150 meter section, which is basically where it's it's um, it's either uh, municipal jurisdiction, right, or you're actually generated this title, which is very specific, right? The the, the cases that I uh, that I discussed is what uh, all council uh, dive into specifically to see yep. if there's if, if it's you know if it was 100% a legitimate uh, title based off of all the procedures that had to that it had to comply with, and if any of that is you know, it's, uh, you know, fuzzy, corrupt, or, you know, it's, it's not 100% squeaky clean, then probably yep. council is going to, to raise some flags there. If not, then uh, you're under municipal jurisdiction and you have to comply with a you know, series of procedures to be able to register your project as a full on uh, concession. So when we're talking concession, I mean, basically is, I mean, you're renting that land, right? You have the right exactly. to, to that land. You you're registering. You're registering a contract, and that contract renews itself uh, through time. 
And you obviously have to commit to not only your investment, um, your timeframes of execution, um, you have to keep uh, guarantees in place to make sure that, that you're not violating anything, not only in construction wise, but environmentally as well. Yep. And um, yeah, basically Costa Rica has gone through a very slow process of uh, organizing the maritime zone by jurisdictions and incorporating the the environmental variables into all that to to be able to address the land uses properly and be able to to uh, to integrate um, the environmental considerations that that need to you know to to fall into place there. So we've got tidal beachfront land basically and concession beachfront land, right? Tidal is when you buy it you actually own the title to that land. Concession is you're renting it. You're renting, exactly. That's the, that's the main difference. And your, your relationship with the municipality uh, when, when you have a concession, again, is, is a, it's, you know, it's, it can become a lengthy process depending on uh, where the municipality is in uh, its, its uh, coastal master plan. If it's a coastal master plan that's outdated, that needs to go through a revision process with ICT, et cetera, then you have wow. to wait till they go through that process, right? So uh, sounds a bit of a nightmare. Areas, sounds a bit of a nightmare buying concession property, Daniel. It's it's uh, it's a tricky process, I gotta say. Okay. But um, uh, for example, a project that we have in Malpais uh, right now, um, we're just about to get our construction uh, permit, we completed absolutely every single process that we had to under 16 months, wow. um, which might seem like a very long time, but uh, going through environmental design, construction blueprint approval, um, registering of the, let's say, of the, of the full master plan, going through all the approvals with ICT and being at the point of having the construction permit issued is, I think it's a monumental uh, achievement and we're, we're actually pretty proud of it. I mean, it's the cost of, if you want to build, you know, in that 50 to, a, to 200 meter zone, you know, it's, it's a little bit more complicated, but again, I think it's worth it just to the, just due to the location, you know, I mean, you, you can't beat that. That's prime real estate in Costa Rica. So. It, it is prime real estate. And depending on where you are, right. If you're in Santa Teresa, if you're in Nosada, depends on where you are, you, you probably are, are, you know, you're better off sticking it out and doing it right. And yep. once you, you know, you get your permits, you're, you're off sailing on, on calm seas and, you know, ready to, to enjoy your project. Sure. So, I mean, if someone, I mean, it sounds like, again, if someone wants something easy, like they just want to have a house with kind of an ocean view, you know, it sounds probably a little easier just to get titled land and build rather than go through the whole concession process. But I mean, if somebody really wants to be beachfront, you know, just be, mm -hmm. I suppose, just be aware it could, it, it will take longer. It will surely take longer. Um, and if you're going to, to purchase titled beachfront, then you, you know, you have to really make sure that um, the title is, is clean. Yep. Um, I think that the science and the, the, leg the legality of it is really down uh, depending on which council you hire or which consultants you're involved, you can cut to the chase really quick and, and make sure that, that you're addressing the proper paperwork and make sure that, that it's a good deal. Um, and again, if the, if the municipalities have, uh, you know, their, their work backlogged a little bit, you might have to wait on it, but um, it'll always be ultimately, um, you know, prime real estate, it, it'll be a good investment if uh, all the rest of the ingredients are there, water, electricity, you know, and you actually can make it work, right? Yeah. So let's just talk, I mean, if you had a time machine, Daniel, and could go back five years, I always like to play this game with everyone, and you could tell yourself to invest into something, you could just whisper in your ear, what would you have invested in and why? But also, what would you have stayed clear of? All righty. Well, surely I cannot, um, you know, I cannot mention Santa Teresa and Nosada. Obviously, if I had cash, um, at, you know, five, six years ago, I would have dropped some major money down there, uh, you know, closed on some good deals that probably would have been very cheap at the time. Yep. And I'd be sitting on some really good real estate right now and probably would have been uh, way ahead with my permits for sure, given my area of expertise. Um, what would I have stayed away from? Well, um, well, I would have surely travel, stayed away. Travel stocks. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that I, I got to say that um, I, I would have, 
I would have steered away from, let's say from the, uh, from the old school um, subdivisions, maybe um, parcelas agricolas, agricultural parcels, and maybe most of the informal um, subdivisions I would have walked away from uh, for sure. Uh, those just don't hold up today as, as, as well. You have a lot of issues, um, you know, getting your neighbor straight and working with architectural parameters and just, um, they just end up making a mess of everything. Um, lots of stuff going on with um, illegal wells and, you know, scenarios yep. that just, uh, you don't want to be in. It's, 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 yeah. not, it's, it's not good for development. Well, let's say because a lot of people are looking to invest here in Costa Rica at the moment. If you inherited $500,000 today, Daniel, when you had to invest it into a business or real estate in Costa Rica, what would you, what would you invest it in and why? Okay. Um, let's see. The, the amount maybe falls short depending on where you are, but I would, I would definitely focus on, on let's say, the, the rural areas that are in the outskirts of uh, you know the hotspots, maybe trying to focus on on a different approach. I think, uh, like we were discussing earlier, regenerative projects, permaculture, uh, sustainable communities. Um, there's probably a lot of opportunities that are still out there where uh, you can find beautiful land. Might not have ocean views, but they're close to you know the hotspots, and they have a lot going for themselves in terms of natural beauty or areas that, that can accommodate this sort of integrated approach. And ultimately what you're providing for, for your clients are is quality of life, right? Yep. And I think that's, that's taken a huge, um, you know, it's, it's been very, uh, you know, protagonistic in what people are looking for right now. And, you know, walking out from, uh, you know, the, the uh, cramness of being in apartments in the cities and what we all know right now. And in my personal experience of actually uh, living in in one of these uh, permaculture developments, it it really feels nice to you know to just you know, take a stroll with your with your kids and your dogs out to you know lots of uh, you know walkways, wildlife, being being able to pick your greens, your fruits. Uh, it's it really does bring some good peace of mind, makes your yeah. life more pleasurable. I, I agree. I mean, I've seen your place. I've seen kind of uh, the the property there. I mean, it's it's very very nice, and I I completely agree with that. I mean. You know, sometimes being slightly far enough away from the hustle and bustle of a town, because even Nasara and Santa Teresa, I mean, it's it's busy, dude. I mean, I, you know, even when mm -hmm. it's quiet, it's busy and the roads, you know, are kind of a little bumpy and like it's kind of nice to be away from that to kind of have your own little sanctuary, but be able to go in and enjoy all the benefits of, you know, that I say hustle and bustle of like restaurants and shops, et cetera, et cetera. So, so yeah, I agree. yeah, yeah. That 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 would be a good way to to approach it, surely. Um, and it'll get it'll get crazier because there's there's a lot of stuff uh, going on, and that's why I feel that that having something that's on the outskirts that can really be your sanctuary, as you said, is is going to be on the money for sure. Yeah, I agree. Well, Daniel, I'll not keep you any further here. Uh, I'm sure I've got to quickly run off and the kids have just got back here. So uh, I really appreciate your time, dude, coming on here, explaining anything. I mean, again, I think we went into quite a bit of technical difficulty, uh, like details here. Uh, so I'm sure we've okay. maybe confused a few people. Um, but again, I like to go into it just because I think it's really important for people to understand is that, you know, that the, uh, the environmental studies that Costa Rica takes really you know, um, serious. Um, but just remember, guys, it's it's only when you build over 500 square meters, if you're building something less than that, you don't need to worry about it. Um, and I think for anybody that wants to contact Daniel, um, you know, again, as he mentioned there, he does project management and also the environmental studies, um, as well as I think also is you've got your fingers in, um, you've got some pretty nice bits of land, uh, no? Yeah, there's there's a section on our website uh, for, for some, you know, some nice pieces of property. We We've basically handpicked those, and yep. they're you know they're they're really good opportunities. They're already screened by Avicenia. so um, thanks a lot, Richard, for having me on. It's it's okay. an honor to 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 hang with you. Thanks for for everything, and um, you know have my my data there available for people to check us out, and we're you know we're here to help. I appreciate it, man. Have a good evening. Okay, take care. Bye. See you soon. Bye bye.